Well, the cases of modern day slavery, I mentioned the last two. Um, there's uh, gonna be more cases happening where there's no uh, protection overseeing, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, we see this every day with abuses that are reported uh, onto our offices in Imokali. Uh, most recently, I cannot give many details because it's uh, a case that is under investigation, but there was a group of 28 workers you know, that reported that they were not being paid correctly, that they were being basically uh, robbed, uh, that they were um, stealing their hours, not paying them, treating them horribly. Uh, so they had to leave their contract. Uh, many workers that I've talked to are in the same uh, circumstances. The boss was shooting his gun uh, next to the entrance of the mobile home that they had as part of the, their deal. And, uh, you know, all of these uh, different ways of intimidating the workforce um, where there's no oversight will continue to happen, sadly. What we have seen is through the, through the market, through the agreements that we have, there's a different type of power, you know, that it's um, aligning with us through the campaign for fair food um, to be able to create a, a different reality uh, for workers in the fields. So it doesn't matter, you know, where the political winds are uh, blowing, uh, you know, creating uh, sometimes, you know, intended consequences, I'm sure, but ultimately protecting workers independently of, uh, you know, partisanships. Um, I think it's important uh, for us to support efforts like this that can guarantee that workers don't have to give up their dignity. Um, we have been able to stop modern day slavery and its tracks in uh, the operations that are protected under the Fair Food Program. The challenge now is to expand these protections. Um, for that, we need more buyers to uh, become responsible uh, purchasers of the fruits and pro produce that we are producing in the fields. Mm -hmm.